you need an envelope, Brother George will see that you get one. When you get it ready, you wave it before the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Say, we're bringing a wave off. That's right. Yeah. That means you say, look here, Lord. I'm bringing Two you a seat. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And with the word seed, there's always a harvest in it. This afternoon, uh, here we're having a celebration of life for wind. If, if you didn't know, she went to be with the Lord. is good. Amen. And his mercy endures forever. Yes. Remember what I said a while ago about that. Every time somebody said that in scripture, the enemy got wounded. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, when Jehoshaphat led his crew into the into the battle, they went forth with Judah leading the way. He said he called out the singers and the praisers yes. and sent them out first. And then when they got there, you know what happened, right? All the enemy was dead. Already dead, and all they got was the, took them three days to gather the spoils. Come on now. Amen. On. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Yes. And his mercy endures forever. Uh, Joy. Uh, let's pray. Yahweh, our Elohim. Yes. Holy is your name, Master, Creator. Holy are you. We come to you in the name of your Son, Yahshua. Thank you for today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for the opportunity to sow the seed. We ask that you bless it in the name of Yahshua, our Messiah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I think it's just a liner here, so yeah. I think so. Okay. That's good. You staying with us today. Yes. That's a good thing. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. It's a, it is 2023. If you add 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3, it equals 7. And the Lord said, it is finished <laughs> when he said 7. So praise the Lord. Uh, I'll, before we uh, get too deep here, I want to go back. Uh, last Sunday, we went over what the Lord had given me for this year and what he had given some other people. So, but I felt like because I keep hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, uh, not by having heard. It comes by hearing and hearing, not by having heard. So, I want to go back over this so we have faith for this as we move on into this year. One, he gave me some things that about this year, and uh, we we mentioned most of them last week. But twenty 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 three is kind of amazing numbers in a way because the number twenty uh, conveys a meaning of complete or perfect waiting period. 
the end of a complete and perfect waiting period. That's what the number, one of the meanings of the number 20. And the number three, we talked about, number three is the number of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. The number three is also the number of resurrection after three days. And the third day, Jesus rose. The number three is the number of transformation. It has to do with, uh, if you look back when uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, he picked three, and he took them up. Remember, we talked about that. He, he took them up, he elevated them, he separated them and elevated them, and then began to give them revelation. So if you would, then in a sense, the number three also has to do with great revelation. So we're at the end of a complete and perfect waiting period. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but there's some things that I've kind of got tired of waiting on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we're at the end of a waiting period. Where it, but he said last week, he said there was a revival of mature Christians. A revival of mature Christians said he's calling forth eunuchs in the kingdom of God. Amen. Eunuchs, everybody, everybody say eunuch. Eunuch. We all know what that means, right? He's calling forth eunuchs. Eunuchs in the Scripture was the ones that prepared the bride for the king. So he said, and they're the ones that did not receive any glory for what they did. They didn't receive any glory. They didn't, uh, if you will, sample the wares. <laughs> they didn't... Uh, all their, their duties were was to teach the ladies what the king liked and what the king wanted and to prepare them for the king coming. And that's what God says. I'm, I want a revival of eunuchs this year. That's maturity. <laughs> It's not somebody that comes in and says, oh, I'm prophet so-and-so, and I prophesied this, and I prophesied that. It's somebody that comes in and directs all, if you will, if whoever will direct the ten attention and the love and the admiration and the worship and the praise to the Lord. Amen. That's like John Baptist was. That's it's kind of like John the Baptist intercessor. Uh, he also said, now he said, there's going to, the road that we'll travel this year has got mountains, hills, valleys, crooked, curvy places in it. But it's also got straightaways where you can accelerate. That's this year. It's, it's a year that we must eat the meat of God's word. Eat the meat God has provided for you to strengthen you for the 2023 20, jousting, he said. It's a year of jousting. But he also said it's a year, are y'all okay with this? Yeah. You need to hear this again. He also said it's a year that the war horse must come forth. I'm telling you, there's been some war horses that are in the army of God. See, everybody, everybody in the body of Christ is not in the army of God, unfortunately. But everybody out here in society is not in the military and army either, is it? Mm-hmm. So he needs war horses to come forth. And the, 
the war horse again we let me cover this just a little bit again the war horse God said he's going to visit his flock basically his flocks he's going to visit his flocks and make them as his goodly horse or beautiful majestic horse in the battle but uh, there was only one tribe if you will that he was going to visit and and transform see this is the year of transformation uh, if, if there's only one tribe if you will that he said he was going to visit and conform them if you will or change them into his goodly horse in the battle now are you ready to carry the Lord into the battle for 2023 yes. that's a question Amen. he's asking us are we ready to carry him into the battle yes. and now I feel like probably we need to go back and talk some more in the weeks ahead about the training of a war horse maybe even mm -hmm. Because war horses are not your normal <laughs> trail riding horses. <laughs> war horses carry their master, their rider, into fierce battle. And here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. A war horse doesn't run from the sound of war. When they hear the clanging of swords, the, the shofar blow, the clanging of swords, they run to that battle. They're trained that way. They're trained and they only listen to their master. The war horse is trained in such a way that their master lives with them or their rider and trainer. He lives with the horse. Basically eats and sleeps with that horse. That horse has to become so intensely trained. Uh, matter of fact, before that war horse can enter the battlefield, he has to be so trained that they fast them for three days at least. No water, no food for three days. And then they set the bucket a feed or a container of feed and water out and if that horse goes to eat that feed before the rider or the trainer tells him he can he's not ready for battle yet that's pretty serious stuff so he's calling war horses forth this year he's calling war horses forth and a war horse has to understand that the closer you get to your master, the more rest and peace you have. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So it's a year of jousting. It's a year the war horse must come forth. And let me back up here a minute because this, this is so important to us this year. I'm telling you, there's some situations coming this year that's not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. But there's some good things going to happen there. You can be on one side of the street and it be a storm coming. On the other side of the street, the sun of righteousness is shining. But a war horse, he only, he said in Zechariah 10, 3, he says, mine anger is kindled against the shepherds uh, and the ones, uh, but I will visit my flock, the house of Judah, and make them as his goodly horse in the battle. Now Judah, you know, Judah is different than some of the other tribes. Judah means praise. It means confession. It means one who takes up a stone and hits the mark. It's, it's so a Judah warrior 
A Judah warrior is one, that, and we've said this many times, but a Judah warrior is one that will praise him no matter what's going on. Amen. A Judah warrior will praise him when things, when things are crumbling around them. When things are not turning out the way you think they're supposed to turn out. But they'll praise the Lord anyway. Yeah. They'll praise him no matter what's happening. They'll praise him. When Jehoshaphat, I mentioned before, you can read about it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I love that chapter. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Judah, it said all Judah was there. Judah, Judah, remember, so anytime I hear the tribe Judah or the man Judah or the scripture with Judah, I think about somebody that's going to break out and praise him no matter what's happening. Amen. Amen. No matter what's going on. Uh, Judah, the man Judah, he did some crazy stuff, you know. Did some stuff kind of like I've done in the past, maybe. And maybe you. <laughs> but, but he... Uh, he, the tribe of Judah is known as praisers. Amen. And they're also known as one that will confess the word of God. Yes. See, when you put that word seed on your offering envelope, you just confess that word. Amen. When you speak, of, when you take, look up a scripture and read it, you're speaking that word of God out. Yes. Releasing it into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Creating an environment. Mm -hmm. For God to move and work. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so he said, I'm looking for some war horses. Matter of fact, he said, I've got to have war horses in 2023. That's what Amen. I heard him say. Amen. So are we going to be war horses or are we going to be sheep? You know, you know me, I'm a horse man. And, uh, and they can be aggravating, but they're not near as aggravating as sheep are. <laughs> sheep and goats. <laughs> My, our neighbors is, and nephew's got some, had a bunch of sheep, and he got so aggravated with them, he sold them, all of them but one or two, but then he got some goats. And now every day or every few days you walk out and hear goat blading in the atmosphere filled with a goat sound. Their head would be stuck in the fence. <laughs> their horns, you know, goes back and they'd run their head through to eat outside the fence. And then when they come back, they're stuck. That wire's right across there. And you've got to get them out or they don't lay there and die. So, I'd rather him visit his flock, the house of Judah, and make them as his goodly horses in the battle. Is let me stay in the sheep and goat pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haven't you? Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, Lord. I mean, it, it, it's so amazing that a true war horse, and a true war horse, I, I've re researched that for years, you know, in the days of old. The war horse, they had war horses that was ponies. All the way up to the big draft horses that weighed 2,000 plus pounds. So they're diverse. <laughs> some war horses pull a wagon. Some war horses pull a wagon with supplies and cannons. and Others, others carry soldiers. They're, they're amazing animals. And, and God has said to us, here, you know, let me give you the interpretation of that scripture in uh, Zechariah 10 3. He said, if you'll praise me no matter what, if you'll praise me in the face of adversity, not praise me for the adversity, but praise me in the adversity. Not praise me for the problem, but praise me in the problem. Amen. And speak to the problem 
whosoever shall say this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and not doubt in his heart. Aren't you glad he didn't say not doubt in his head? Yeah. <laughs> and not doubt in his heart. But believe those things which he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's a, that's a Judah praiser. Amen. That's a Judah confessor. Yes. Yes. Come on. See, you can praise him right now. I yes. don't know what's going on in Hallelujah. your life. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Lord. Because he said, I'm going to visit you yes. and I'm going to transform you yes. into a revelatory, yes. <laughs> revolutionary. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, it's hard for me to get off this because I love horses so much and I understand them. And, uh, see, when I when you see when you you can take a a wild horse that's never been inside of an enclosure, never had a human hand on him, but if you get him in a round pen, I call that. I call that a similitude of the earth, circle of the world, the earth that we know. Mm -hmm. When you get that wild animal in that circular corral, see, you can't give him one with corners because he'll get in a corner and try to jump the fence. But you got to give him some room to run and let him settle down a little bit. But if you, what, what's this? Can I, can I go ahead with this? Yes. If you, if you, here, here's, here's how horses learn, which includes war horses. Yes. Here's how they learn. They learn, they don't learn by pressure. They learn by the release of pressure. Is anybody listening? Amen. Amen. So when you feel like you're under pressure, we know who the king of pressure is. Amen. That's the devil. Mm -hmm. But the the whole, you know, Jesus rode in on a colt that nobody had ever ridden before. You think he's a horseman? A horse trainer? No man had ever sat on that that thing. Not only did he ride him for the first time, he rode him in a parade. People shouting, people throwing palm branches, waving their palm branches. And Leslie knows if you grab a palm branch and go to waving it in front of an untrained horse, it's probably going to tear something up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but if, here's how they learn. You put them in that round pen, that's the greatest place. And I said... And I'm working with this horse several years ago, and uh, and I said, you know, uh, this is like the circle of the earth, as the Bible said. And so here's the master, if you will, of the horse. And you put pressure on that horse. You don't beat on him. You don't whip on him. You just put physical, present yourself closer to him and, a horse that don't want you to ride it, he's going to run. See, horses are like you and I. They're lazy and they're, and they're, and they're cowards. <laughs> Until you train them. Until, watch this, until you train them to face their fears, they'll run from their fears, but once you train them to face their fears, they'll run to their fears. And they'll push their fears out of the way. If you can you can start the best way to keep a horse from being a spooky type horse is to get him in an area where he can't completely get away from you <laughs> and then do something to spook him we we use a, I use a, a stick if you will it's a, a training stick but I put a Walmart bag on the end of it or something <laughs> and, and rattle that thing, make that noise, boy, that, that gets them. <laughs> they don't want to run from that so bad. 
But if you keep working with them and teach them that uh, that's not going to hurt them, they'll learn to come to it. And actually, you know, we did a thing one time where we had a rider on a, a young horse. It was young. He was riding good. Took a garbage bag. <laughs> you know how that rattles, that plastic garbage bag? Well, that coat wanted to leave the country when we had that. And so we, we had somebody on the horse and we'd run at that horse with that bag and go ahead and blow up and tear out there. The person on it had to be a pretty good rider. But, but, but before the day was over, you could just ride him right to that and they, you could shake the bag and he'd just run right on to it. He'd go right up to it. He said he had learned that this thing's not going to kill me, and I can push it away from me. I can get, I can push the enemy back. Yes. That's what he's learning. Yes. And before long, that young horse will love you because if you put a little pressure on him, he moves away from you. And then you back off. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you was under pressure and when you finally decided to go to the Lord? <laughs> when you finally decided <laughs> to go to the Lord, peace came. Yes, peace came. So when that when that horse, he will learn you put pressure on him and kind of just push him away from me. And then once you see that horse is moving away from you pretty good and he's moving his feet, you gotta move the feet. We gotta move our feet. We walk by faith. <laughs> you gotta keep their feet moving when you start up. And it's gotta be a forward movement to start with. And once you do that a little bit and then we drop back and take the pressure off and, and won't even look at them just look to the ground if you don't and so you, the pressure's off you don't feel the presence of the master you need to start looking for him then that coke will come towards you and before the day's over, or before a couple of days are over, he'll be following you wherever, wherever you go. You can't get away from it. And that's, that's what God wants out of us. You know, sometimes if we're feeling pressure, it may be the Lord just trying to get us to turn toward him. Amen. Maybe him just showing us that if we'll just look at him, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. And the closer you draw to him, the more peaceful and, and the more comfort you have. Yes. Because when that coat gets up here, and, and, and it's so amazing, they will, they will, once they start figuring out that if I move toward that person, that the pressure comes off. But typically, naturally, they won't walk the first time right up to you. They'll get back from here to that chair and stop and wait on you to respond to them. And once you do, then then you have to teach them. In a little while, you'll have to teach them not to get too close, not to get on top of you. Because <laughs> they weigh a lot more than you do. <laughs> so I, I hope you learned something out of that. Amen. This, this is a year. This, he said to me, this is a Lazarus year. Lazarus literally means... In the Hebrew, it means God has helped. And, it, and the Hebrew word is Eleazar for Lazarus. 
And Eleazar actually also means the God of help. God has helped, the God of help. And in the Greek, it is God is my help. God has helped, the God of help is my help. The God of help is my help. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lazarus, think about that. See, this is a Lazarus year because, see, the, uh, Lazarus was dead for four days. You remember? Yeah. He, they said, you know, he, and Jesus did that on purpose. Because when he was dead for three days, he spent the night in another place before he went on over there. He could have went right on that, the third day. But he waited till the fourth day. The number four again. You remember the number four, right? It, what does it mean? Divine appointments. Divine appointments. Appointed, appointed times. <coughs> Elevation, promotion, creativity. Thank you, Lord. So, if this is a Lazarus year uh, and we know the number three has to do with resurrection but also it's a Lazarus year because because in, in Lazarus when he was dead for four days everybody most people know that's been here very long especially you know that uh, in the Hebrew culture they believe that that any time within that first three days after someone died, it was possible for them to come back to life on their own. So Jesus waited four days so that there was no way for that to happen. He had to come to show that he was the resurrection. Yes. But four also has to do with divine appointments. And appointed times. Uh, for also, let me throw this in here while we're while we're on Lazarus here for a moment. Uh, the Lord, uh, the number three is so important to the Lord, and he he asked me one day. I was pulling out of the parking lot of the old building where we were before we came here. And he said to me, just as clear as I've heard anything, but I was not thinking about what he brought up to me. I was not thinking about what he said. He said to me, how many, or he said, do you know how many people I've raised from the dead in Scripture? I said, well, let me think. <laughs> Let me see a lot. Let me pause and think. So I just stopped, fixed the pull out on the parkway, and I just stopped, and I had to go back in my mind and think, and I said, well, you raised Jairus' daughter, the 12-year-old girl. Uh, you raised the widow of name, son, in the book of Luke. You interrupted, I love this, he interrupted a funeral procession. He did. He did, right in the middle of the street. Jesus, had that woman, it was her only son. And he was like in his 20s. I, now that's me. I, I didn't read that in scripture. I just assumed that's kind of an educated guess. And he just interrupted the funeral procession and raised this young man from the dead and handed him back to his mother. So don't invite Jesus to the funeral <laughs> unless you want to interrupt it. But he... Uh, 
Now, one reason he told me that this was a, don't let me get off the resurrection part, but one reason that he said uh, that it, he included Lazarus in this year because next year's 24. Next year's 24. And uh, so uh, I'm thinking that we're going to have a major resurrection next year. And I don't know about you, but this year will be gone before we can turn around. <laughs> so, back to what Jesus asked me in the parking lot. Y'all want to know? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what he asked me, he said, how many did I raise from the dead in, in the Bible, in the Scripture? I said, well, you know, the Jairus' daughter, 12-year-old girl, uh, widow of name, son, and then Lazarus. And he said to me, uh, that is the parable of the first resurrection. The first resurrection. So he raised three people from the dead and what? Watch this. Lazarus was dead for four, day, four days. Is that right? A day with the Lord's a thousand years, a thousand years is a day, right? Okay, so, okay, now if he raised Lazarus from the dead on the fourth day, and in the scheme of things, Jesus came on the fourth 1,000 year day from Adam. On the fourth, not after the fourth, on the fourth. The New Testament church was birthed on the fourth 1,000 year day from Adam. So, now we have Lazarus that was raised from dead on the fourth day, which is represents the Old Testament saints. He's so merciful. What watch? It, he rep, it represents the Old Testament saints. The widow of Nain's son was probably in his twenties maybe 30 at the most, which represents us, the church. The little girl, the little girl, Jairus' daughter was 12. Are you interested in this? Yes. The Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. 12, you know, what? what 12 is an amazing number too. 12 is the apostolic number. 12 means a new form of government. It also means a new way of doing things. And just prior to Jesus raising the little girl that was how many years old? 12, 12. 12 years old. Just prior to that, he had this well, I want to say he had just healed the woman with the blood issue. But actually her faith healed her, is what he said. Amen. He didn't say, I healed you. He said, your faith made yes. you go. That's right. Yeah. Now go in peace and exist whole. Mm -hmm. Be whole. So, and she had been suffering from this problem for how long? 12 years. 12. And then the next thing that happens is this little, uh, this uh, this leader, uh, Jair, uh, Jairus, he comes along and says, my little girl's at the point of death at home, but if you'll come, if 
few come, she shall live. So, so he, 12, 12, so he said, and here's something, if you'll read this, read scripture like this, if you will notice when Jesus is teaching something, normally, maybe not 100% of the time, but normally, what he does right after that will be a demonstration of what he just taught. So look, he, he raised a 12-year-old girl that had only been what? She wasn't dead when she wasn't dead when her father ran to Jesus, was she? He says she's at the point of that. She was when they got there, can you imagine what was going on? The lady with issue of blood had just got healed out in the street. She wasn't supposed to be in the street. All the religious guys was wanting to kill her, stone her, because their law said a woman within her situation could not be in public and could not, uh, in that kind of problem, health problem she had, was considered unclean, so nobody couldn't have anything to do with her, and certainly a priest couldn't talk to an unclean woman on the street. But he said, I'm about to do something new. I'm about to change the order of things, and when this woman comes to me in faith, I'm going to pour out my anointing on her. Yes. Because he said he felt that leave him, that virtue, that anointing. Yes. Because she tapped into that uh, after the number 12. That's all she needed. Alright, Jairus' daughter was dead for how long? Who knows how long? Ever how long it took Jairus and Jesus to walk to his place from the healing that happened in the street with a woman with this your blood? Ever how long that took? Probably only a, a very short time. The, the widow of Nain's son that was in his 20s or 30s, uh, he was probably dead for about two days, two or three days. And then Lazarus was dead for four days. A few minutes, a couple of days, two or three days, or 2,000, 3,000. <laughs> uh, so now we have the picture of the first resurrection that you read about in the book of the Revelation. It said this is the first resurrection. Well, the first resurrection, if I know God, he's got to make three parts of it. God does it, everything in with numbers, and he, he, does, he does many, many things with threes. So, watch this. If Lazarus represents the Old Testament saints, the widow named son represents the church. And the little girl represents the one, the, the tribulation saints that get saved during the tribulation. And he said, this is the first resurrection. See, the second resurrection is for the lost and the evil. But the first resurrection has three parts called God's, a three-part God. Father, Son, and Spirit, heaven, earth, and hell. He created you and your spirit, soul, and body. So, Praise thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, if if a day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day, and that widow named son represents us, and he was... Uh, probably two, three days. So that's about to where we are. That's about where you are. That's right. You're about in the, you're after two days. Remember what Hosea says? 
After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, we'll live in his sight. Thank you, Lord. All right. This is a Psalm 23 year. He said a Psalm 23 year. Everybody pretty much knows Psalm 23. <clears throat> Can we read it again? Mm -hmm. Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Sister Leslie said the other day, The Lord is my shepherd, he's all I want. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all you need. Amen. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures, here's tender green grass, which represents uh, prosperity. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. This is a year, this is a year of restoration. Yes. Remember what the Lord said, I will restore that which I took not away. Yes. <laughs> he says, I'm going to restore that that I didn't take away. Somebody else took it away, but I'm going to be your restorer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Here you go. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thank you, Lord. We're going to have a banquet right in front of the devil. Yes. <laughs> thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. There's that overflow. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, yes. and I will dwell, the King James says, in the house of the Lord. You could say, I will dwell in the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. See, we, we, we need to be more kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. The church has moved from dominion, from a dominion mandate to a departure mandate. Mm -hmm. And we need, somebody if the war horse is coming out, that means there's some fighting to do. Actually, not really. He didn't fight the fight for you, but you gotta go to the battlefield. Yeah. You know, Jehoshaphat and his group, Judah led the way. When they got there, they looked around and there was no fighting, fighting going on, just dead bodies everywhere. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, so I'm believing that the demonic forces is going to be wiped out in any situation that I'm involved in. All I'm going to do is confess the word of God yes. and yes. praise the Lord all yes. the way to the battlefield. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He also said it's a year of pioneering. This is a big year we got. Mm -hmm. It's a year of pioneering, he said. Natural and spiritual. He said a year to blaze new trails and open old, old ones and reestablish old paths. Open new paths and reestablish old paths. You know, some of those old paths in your life may be grown up a little bit. Maybe some trees fell over, some briars and thorns in the way. 
Remember what I said last week, if you live in Alabama, the name Alabama means thick it clear. It's a Native American word. It means thick it clear. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, yes. Thank you, Lord. It's a, it's a Malachi 4 year, he said. Thank you, Lord. Malachi 4. Malachi 4. Malachi 4, we read this last week, but I want to read it again. Thank you, Lord. You ready? Yeah. Verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now see, you need to pay close attention when it says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. That's the leader of the army. That's the captain of the army. So when he says the Lord of hosts, that means there's an army involved. If there's an army involved, that means there's warfare involved. Amen. And if there's warfare involved, the Lord needs war horses to carry him into the battle. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let me keep reading. But unto you that fear, the King James says, fear is reverential fear and worship. So you could read it, un but unto you that worship the Lord or worship my name, Shall the Son, the Son, S-U-N it says here, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. We, I shared that last week with you. I turned two of my horses out. They'd been in the stall for a day without being out any, and they ran and bucked and kicked and squealed and till they were dripping with sweat and this is uh, that was December a couple of days ago of course we've had some hot days but this wasn't one of those hot days they was running, running and bucking and kicking cause they was glad to be free now didn't we have a word about freedom for this year they was glad to be free and when you're free when you know you're free whom the son is set free is free indeed so when you know you're free mm -hmm. you're free amen the, and we had a word from last week that said this was a year of freedom is that right is that the way it was Jenny? A year of freedom. So it's a Malachi year. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you shall tread down the wicked. I'll go for that. Amen. You shall tread down the wicked. If you go back to Zechariah and read chapter 10, you'll find out it talks about treading down the your enemy in the mire or the mud in the street. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let me finish reading this, and before we quit, don't let me forget to go back to that phrase, the son of righteousness. Y'all don't let me get away from that. Remember the law of Moses, verse 4. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Hebron for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. So you could very well right here say, remember the word of God. Remember the word of God. 
the, remember the law of Moses, which represents the spoken word, by the way. I mean the written word, I'm sorry. Moses is a similitude or parallel of the written word. Remember that. Behold, verse 5, I will send you Elijah, which represents the writ of the spoken word. I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come smite the earth with a curse. Now, back up to verse 2. He says, But unto you that worship me, or fear, reverentially fear me, my, if you fear my name, everybody say, Worship the Lord. Worship, worship the Lord. Lord. If you worship the Lord, that's what he's talking about right here. If you worship the Lord, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. Did you hear what he said? Amen. If you'll worship me. Mm -hmm. Did you understand that? What he's saying is, if you'll worship me, you can be free. Yes. Amen. If you're a worshiper of God and a praiser of God, yes. you can be free. Yes. Because yes. when you're worshiping God, and you can be free from any, I, I can promise you, you can get free from anything if yes. you just press in and worship God. Glory. Yes. 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 Thank and you. praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise yes. you, Lord. Let me, let me, uh, but he said, if you worship me, the son of righteousness, S-U-N, he said. So what he's saying, he's not talking about the son that takes care of us, that orbits or whatever we do. Well, I have to ask Brother Lee. <laughs> but uh, he said, if you worship me, I'll arise upon you. Yes. Let, let me give, can I give you one more? Yes. One more scripture that I wasn't planning on doing. Isaiah, 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 I think it's Isaiah 30 maybe. Let me find it. Isaiah 30. Let's start in. Let's start on in verse twenty-five. Are you ready? Yeah. Verse twenty-five of Isaiah chapter thirty says, "And there shall be upon every high mountain, <laughs> and upon every high hill." rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. We had one of those yeah. in 9 11. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. In the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Before I read this next verse, I want, I want to see. when when nine eleven happened, when the towers were uh, they flew the planes and the towers and they fell. For the next year, there was more people in churches in the United States and America than ever before. Yes. A year later, there were less than ever before. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go there right now. Verse 26. Moreover, the light of the sun shall be as the, I mean, moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Now, if Christ is the 
The Son represents Christ. What, are the, what is he saying right here? He's saying when disaster comes, whatever comes, when anything that comes, he said there's going to be, uh, basically he said there's going to be on every high mountain and every high hill, rivers and streams. See, that's not typical. I've been on, I've been on Kill Mountain at Gurley and there's not any rivers on Kill Mountain. And, but he said, in other words, he said, I'm going to cause the word, the water of my word to flow in places that it's never been before. Amen. Now, he's, watch this. He says, and the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. So we've already settled the fact that the moon represents us, the born again believers, the church. But what? look what he said here. Because see, if the sun, this S-U-N represents as a prophetic picture of the Son of God, Jesus the Anointed, then the moon has to represent us because we don't have any light of our own. We only reflect the light of the sun. We're reflecting his light. But it says right here that there's a time coming when that the moon is going to look like the sun. Are you listening to me? There's a time coming when people are going to see you, but they're not going to see you. They're going to see Yahshua. Amen. You're going to look like him. Amen. And what's this? And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. <laughs> As the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and heal the stroke of their womb. Glory to God. Amen. You're about to look like Jesus to everybody you come in contact yes. with that needs help yes. in this coming year because there's going to be many that needs help. Amen. got to become kingdom minded thank you Lord we got to get mature I was going to go to Hebrews 5 but we don't have time probably but uh, we've got to become mature sons and daughters of the most high God Yes. because see Servants beg, friends ask, and sons command. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. This is the decade of the mouth. Amen. You need to be declaring and decree. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord. The month, the Hebrew month we're in, it means good. Tabat. T E B E T. Thank you, Lord. This is the 15th day of Tabat of 5783. Thank you, Lord. Your Hebrew year. January 8th, 2023, or 15th day of Tabat. 5783. Now, all these things that we're talking about, see, he's looking for warriors that will carry him into the battle and that will be obedient to him. But we're looking, uh, he's already promised us that no matter what's going on, the sun's going to shine on you. Amen. Amen. Did he not? Did I not just read that? Yes. yes. See, Joseph had a 
an anointing on him to prosper in a family. You're the seed of Abraham. Are you saying there's a famine coming? Yeah. I'm saying that. But. But. You're the seed of Abraham. The Bible says that. Abraham sowed. In the land of a famine. And in the same year. Everybody say the same year. Same year. In the same year, reaped a hundredfold. Yes. And then it goes on to say that Abraham was very rich. And then it names what he was rich in. Everything. <laughs> and not only was he rich in everything, you're the seed of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ and he, he also said that he's promised you he's promised you the world Amen. if you don't believe it read it it's in Romans chapter 4 thank you Lord can you handle the world Thank you, Lord. Amen. If we don't expect it, I'm closing. Let me give you my closing thing. If we don't expect it, and if we don't want it, and if we're not looking for it, we're sure we sure aren't going to get it. That's right. You got to be expecting it, wanting it, and looking for it. God's prophetic word should empower us to not avoid or fear pain of the world, but to turn toward it with compassion and courage. Amen. Yes. It's time to grow up. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know, I think I know everybody. Everybody's born again here, so. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in your spare time this week, I know you got plenty of it. <laughs> Read Hebrews 5 and 6. Thank you, Lord. Anyone have anything they want to add or take away or, or question or comment? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 2.30 today here. <clears throat> Celebration of life for wind. She was a special kind of warrior. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. But she's home now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For some R&R. &R. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you. And you are the greatest in the cosmos. Amen. Because you belong to him. You're blessed and highly favored. You're kings and priests unto God. You're seed of Abraham by through Christ Jesus. You're heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Kings and priests. You are war horses that yes. carry him into the battle. Yes. In the name of Yahshua, we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 You go to lunch and come back, there's going to be beverage and some dessert you know yeah course. so yeah 2.30 we got two hours and two and a half hours if you go eat some lunch if you come in if you're able to come back to the service for when uh, uh, we'll have uh, tea and coffee and, and some dessert uh, 
as we celebrate. We're going we to celebrate this life. Amen. Amen. She fought hard. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And she's done met the Lord and received some rewards for that fight. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed in the name of Yahshua. Amen. I love you. Yeah. Love you. Oh. Thank you.